I'm Jaron, I'm uh, the creative lead at Paradox. Um, I've been here talking about the Imperator from the new game. And uh, here's uh, hi to the Steinwallen community. Um, I played you, Rome, uh, yeah. pretty often, and I recognize quite a lot of game mechanics during yeah. your presentation yeah. of Imperator Rome. Is this old Rome game a kind of predecessor? Yeah, this is the sequel. Yeah. It's like if you compare Hotline 4 to Hotline 3 or Hotline 2, yeah. it's like you have the same ingredients. Yeah. Like you have uh, production, uh, you have uh, technology, you have naval things. All of the same uh, systems in Hotline 2 are there in the third and then they are in the fourth, but they're completely. Oh, they're not completely different. The trade, we have a trade system where you trade for goods to give bonuses in the first room. Yeah, I remember that. Hmm? Uh, we have a trade system for goods that gives you benefits in this one, but they work completely different. Here, accumulating surpluses is a good. You trade on a state level instead of an individual province. Um, you. Uh, uh, you're not exchanging one goods for another, but instead you have your import systems. Mm -hmm. So this is an example. It's like the ingredients are the same, but they're not prepared the same way, or okay, or all the flavors are not the, the same. The new level of the uh, yeah of the mechanics, and there's also new mechanics and change. Yeah, what are the big new points? I would say uh, character interactions are new and unique. We have the military tradition systems. Mm -hmm. We have um, all these unit abilities for like road building or raiding and things you can do there. The character system, how important will it be the characters in the game? The characters. Uh, I would say far more than EU4, far more than Stellaris. Not as much as, as in CK2 because there you actually play characters. Yeah. But here is like characters of loyalty, their popularity, their prominence, yeah, and they belong to various internal factions in your country. You really have to manage them mm -hmm. so that they, they don't become too disloyal. You have to like make sure that the the popular people are taken care of. And if someone's there's a lot of character interaction, we have to like yeah. There. Can you give us some examples for these interactions? Yeah, uh, you can put, try to put someone in person, for example, or you can um, bribe someone to become more loyal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can smear someone's reputation so their popularity goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, with characters in other nations, you can decrease their loyalty. And you can also attempt to uh, recruit them to your side, which I can get someone with good skills and traits to join you instead, or a disloyal general to leave with this army to you, yeah. or a governor with this anterior region to you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Can you describe the event system a little bit? Is it, is it the same like in European Universalis or? Or CK2 or Stellaris. It's yeah, so you have uh, generic events, character events, and there are also historical yeah, events. We have not finished the, uh, yeah. how the content works, so I can't really go into detail. Ah, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the end date is around zero, right? Yeah, right. something like that. Yeah, something like that. Why do you stop at the beginning of the Imperial Age? Because uh, they didn't, the Empire didn't expand much of their. In the, in the, the peak borders was at about 117 or something, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's only like parts of uh, what is it, Dacia and uh, yeah. a little bit about the German borders that were added post Caesar yeah. uh, or post Augustus. And then just internal conflicts. And yeah, and then, and then uh, eventually the Empire stagnates and dies. And mm. I do not think stagnation and death is fun gameplay. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is also not a potential time frame for DLCs or anything, or scenarios. <laughs> if we ever come up with an idea to make uh, uh, it fun to lo start losing, we will probably <laughs> make that, but 
<laughs> in the okay. last 20 plus years, I have not done that yet. Okay. Um, will there be any victory conditions, maybe like in Stellaris, so if you could uh, manage a big Imperium to uh, grow? I'm not sure, because I'm sorry. I'm, no problem. <laughs> uh, because we start with some Empires really large, so it's hard. Uh, I don't know. Okay. We'll, we'll have achievements. We'll have, yeah. So. All right. In Solaris, for the first time, you have visualized battles. Um, is that an option for other grand strategy games? Maybe for Rome? No, not any product. We're not going to visualize that. What makes sure that it does not get boring in the mid or late game um, when you play a, a, a bigger realm, a bigger? Because then you have far more characters. Okay. And the more characters you have, the more likely they are to be. Yeah. They are going to be low because they are not happy with decisions. Um, you need to so you constantly have the threat of barbarians and threat of civil war. Mm -hmm. Okay, there will be a civil war mechanics. Yeah. All right. Okay, and what do you mean? Will this be a good game for multiplayer experience? Yes. Because? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, it's a constant uh, growth. Um, challenge to growths with the civil wars and all these character interactions. And yeah. The original year room was really fun in the multiplayer. Yeah. And here we have a far better military system and uh, and which involves a lot more tactical decisions. Yeah. Okay, could you um, tell us a bit, little bit of, about the military system? We have over seven thousand cities and provinces you can move about to creates a really maneuverable warfare. We have, uh, yeah, units, there's nine different unit types yeah. that have different abilities, like archers are good at shooting distance in some ones, but really bad at facing cavalry. Chariots are good for something, I can't even remember. Yeah. But there's a reason most of them didn't use chariots. <laughs> and you have, uh, so yeah, you can compose your armies out of a uh, so it's deeper than U4? Yeah, far deeper. Okay. We also have combat tactics that you can pick. Yeah. And uh, that's a kind of like a rock, paper, scissor. Yeah. Because this one type is always weak towards one and strong versus another. How long does Paradox work on such a title from the first codes to the release? We still have code from uh, uh, the 90s in our code base, so... Yeah, okay. It's hard. No, I don't, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, anything from like 14, 15 months to 3 to 4 years. To oh, yeah, okay. This. After the experience with Hearts of Iron and Stellaris, how safe is the estimated release date or time frame? Early? Uh, we, we, with early, say, the first half of the year, as most people prefer. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the likelihood of us not being out there involves uh, me getting severely sick tomorrow and being gone for and uh, there's no way in yeah. hell in normal races that we're not going to be out in that time period. That's why we announced so late yeah. in the depths of So the same things like in, uh, like uh, during Hearts of Iron yeah. will not happen? No, it will not happen. I just want one thing to know that uh, Swedish Army always defeated Wolfenstein. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay.